DreamHack Masters Winter is brought to you by Intel, Corsair, Monster Energy, MSI, and U.S. Air Force. the North American edition of the DreamHack Masters Winter 2020 and we are kicking things off with our first semi-final game. One of these teams will be eliminated, one of them will move on forward to the grand final. It's Chaos taking on Yeah and I am your host James Banks. Joining me as always is Pimp and Maniac and we are ready for, to see who is going to really stand the test of time when it comes to this matchup. Yeah, that's a good question. We've seen a, a bit of up and downs from pretty much all teams so far. I think there's one team that has impressed us a lot. That's Team 1. I think they've been doing a good job. Chaos has been a bit up and down. They have won both their matches coming into the playoff bracket as the favorites. But it's hard to say which one of these four teams can't win the tournament. And I think that is a positive because it's completely open. Yeah, it's absolutely. It is wide open. And we talk about Chaos and narrative has to be sure. Individually speaking, they've been stellar. They've been lights out. But we have to talk about their situation. They've been out there tweeting, looking for options, looking yep. for projects. And, and we cannot stand here and ignore that. That is a very specific scenario, very specific environment for them. But can they perform with that type of scenario? We'll see. Well, we're going to ignore this conversation for now because I've got a sports buff question for all of you guys who are following along with this. Now, these ones continue to get harder and harder, and this one may be the hardest just yet. Who came third in the DreamHack Masters Spring 2020 North America? Was it A, 100 Thieves, B, Furia, C, Liquid, or D, Cloud9? Maybe we'll know. Him probably doesn't. That's know. why I don't believe him if he says he knows. Yeah, no, that's he I'm calling the bluff. You know that. You know that. I get easier it. and easier and easier. I'm calling the bluff. That's this guy. It. This guy. I don't believe that at all. No, you Counter Strike. No, you Counter Strike, <laughs> boys. Well, we do know a lot about Counter Strike, and we also need to know a lot about IEM as well, because that event is going to be absolutely crazy, and these are the teams that will be taking place in it so far. We've got Furia, Heroic, Vitality, Chaos are in there with another chance of showing Ooh. the world what they got. Liquid, Astralis, Complex and Navi, and we all know who's going to win that, boys. Yeah, you have uh, you have an opinion on that one, James. Yeah, Navi. But the reality is, as far as they're coming in strong. Oh, yeah, okay. You're not going for your boys' vitality? Yeah, but they're always in the back of my mind. You know, I can always pull them as a trump card. There you go. And vitality might Didn't win. see Gambit anywhere. No, no, they're they working their gym. way up, you know. This was, this was a while ago teams had to qualify for that. Gambit is showing their face now, right? Ah, okay. Come on, I already picked Navi. Why are you trying to throw Gambit under the bus every single <laughs> He just bullies the young kids, don't you? That's what it's and about. And that's because of you. That's it's because, because of you. you know. I have nothing against they're Gambit. I think they're a fantastic team. Just, you know, the, the biggest fan out there may not be as nice as they are. I am. But you know what? We've got to look at Chaos now, right? Mm. Because Chaos are in a position, like you were just mentioning, Maniac, mm. where they are in turmoil, right? Sure. They want to play CS. They want to stick together. No one in North America is giving them a chance. There are other teams out there who may be stealing checks who are getting checks that this team are not getting, and they're actually ranked a lot higher than some of these teams out there. They've shown they can play Counter-Strike at a very high level. We've seen that in glimpses in this tournament. We, of course, saw it in the Beijing tournament. And they've been doing a good job as of lately when it comes to performing at these tournaments in these uh, difficult circumstances that's been going on winning Chaos. Now, it is a fact that they're no longer going to continue to play under Chaos. I think coming into uh, to the Global Finals, that's going to be the last event playing with that name for that organization. And afterwards, as Matthew said, you know, all the players have pretty much been out on Twitter saying, we're looking for opportunities, not only in Counter-Strike, but also in Valorant. So to me, it seems like it's split for them right now. For them, it must be hard to, you know, have full focus on Counter-Strike when you're also playing Valorant on the side. Yeah, that is the thing, right? And, and I cannot possibly stand here and always talk about the psych 
psychological factors of Counter-Strike and how it is a mental affair as well. And again, ignore the fact that they don't really know what the future holds for them. Mm -hmm. It is going to be so hard for them to actually give 200% into this game and possibly the next one if they qualify, knowing or rather not knowing what's going to happen. Yeah. Maybe that's going to be the 10% missing for them to win that game. It is a huge... I want to say hugely impactful situation, also kind of singular and unique in itself, and it must not be easy for them. And this is the thing, when you're looking at Chaos, right, you spoke about all these things they're going through. Right now, they've got to just make the most of this last no. hurrah. They have to, right? And, and as, as Matt just said, it, it's hard for the players to know where the future lays. You know, you can look at this tournament, you can think to yourself, okay, if we win this one, it's two tournaments in a row that we're going to win as a team. You know, there's a lot of prize money in here as well, so definitely some positives they can take away. And who knows, maybe an organization is sitting out there thinking, I'm ready to invest, I'm ready to pick a team, but just want to make sure that Chaos is still in it. And if they can win this tournament in these circumstances, at least they're showing some resilience. Well, we've heard a lot from John G throughout this over and over again, but this time around, we get to hear what Vanity's thinking. I mean, the game against Rebirth was pretty close, but I mean, as soon as we got to overtime, we knew we won. We just kind of were messing up on some things in the end of the game because we already thought we won, essentially. Like, people mentally checking out. It kind of happens when we're playing, like, these lower-level teams. It's harder to play, especially when they have, like, these super random play styles. So, I mean, I don't know. I think we knew we would win. It just took us a while to get there. He oh! takes full advantage of it as Curry. A big whiff coming out. And a big punish from Jonzi, who's not done yet. He's spraying them out, he's spraying them down. He's up at 33 kills. There's only one more player to find in Chaos. There is surely no way they can lose this one. Jonzi has gone on the hunt. Jonzi has been tagged up, but it doesn't even matter because Zephyr sideswipes him, puts an end to it, and they get the 16th round. Chaos dominating here on Mirage. Uh, I definitely see where the favorites going into this tournament. I think we've won pretty much every tournament in NA this year. I mean, I'm pretty confident we'll take this one home too. Oh, he's hanging oh. on, he's hanging strong, and there's Headcuff delivered! Zeppa! I think making playoffs at DreamHack Masters is pretty important to us. I mean, obviously, it's probably will be our last event under Chaos. I mean, hopefully, we can come up with a win just to prove that we still are a good team and good players. Now, Marky's alone, finds the first key to the second one! Marky does it all! Ace for him! Marky does it all. Does it all. Oh, I love hearing your voice on these little I'm not getting used to it. I love it. I'm a big fan of it. <laughs> I know you may not be used to it, but I just get a little soft spot in my heart for you guys when we get these commentary moments go down. But honestly, he said an interesting part there about this is the last event for us on the Chaos. Does that mean they don't represent Chaos when it comes to IEM? We, we don't really know. Yeah. Uh, it is hard to say. I just wanted to bounce back on the fact that he said they're confident. And I think even if the results don't show it, because actually, if you keep an eye on the stats, these have been tight games, three maps, and hard series. Overtimes. I was always left with the feeling that they were never truly threatened. And it is okay. somewhat special. Like, there was always a safety net, a safety space for individuals to shine. And whenever it was needed, they were just stepping up individually and winning the game. Now, today, I get to know if I was wrong or if actually they can just step it up and push it to the next level. I have the feeling they have more in the tank than what we have seen. Yeah. And if I base my opinion on this interview, he seems to agree with that. Well, he does agree with that for now. We're going to have to see if they can deliver it because that was all the chaos and now it's time to get a bit of yeah! Him. You love this. Yeah, I, that's one. <laughs> we agreed coming into this night. You know, that's you had number one. Three, you got you three. Had three in total. You used one. Just so we uh, keep track of that. After two minutes. Yes. Aww. I like these guys, right? Yeah. We may not like what we see from them on Overpass, but I'm coming back to their Inferno place. Sure. These guys on certain maps seem like they are invincible. And if you're Chaos right now, do you dare challenge them on Inferno? Maybe. Uh, that's a good question. I, I feel like for, for Yeah Gaming, the, the level of confidence they're showing when they play Inferno, the level of confidence they're showing when they're playing Mirage, it's high. You know, it's very, very high. The peak level we've seen from these guys has been incredible, impressive, and, and maybe also a bit surprising to me. I didn't know they were that good when they're playing well. But the problem for me is that we see the peak being all the way up here, and when they play well, mm. it's good, it's nice, but we also see the bottom being all the way down here, right? So we don't really know where to put them. It can be very, very good, and it can be very, very poor. And when you go up against a team like Chaos, it has to be good throughout the entire series. Yeah, I, I fully agree with this sentiment. I think there is there is no bottom, there's no limit as to where they can drop down, but also the highs are extremely, extremely high. In terms of players, in terms of skill, you're looking at your Dumao, you're looking at RCF, even Fasten. Mm. I know he's a little oh, bit behind yeah. if you keep an eye on the numbers, but rifle in the hand, he can be a huge difference maker. He's very aggressive, he's very calm as well with the rifle. But then my question becomes, how do we explain that inconsistency in level? And, and that's a problem for me to predict them in the future. It is a hard to, to team to predict when it comes to this fight, because we don't know what's going on with them, but they are one of the more stable teams throughout North America. So let's see what Swish is thinking about their toughest challenge yet.
I mean, Inferno went great. Or yeah, it just went awesome. Um, trolled a little bit for a couple rounds. We were laughing, having a good time though. Um, we felt Inferno in the bag. Uh, it was just fine. And uh, for pass, have yet to win it so far in uh, Dream Hack. So <laughs> we already know what map Chaos is gonna pick. Places cut right oh, here. That could be a kill. Bomb goes down though. We need more than one kill. Text one, oh. text two. That's fantastic. Wow. A third one as well. Coming into this tournament, we we felt like we could go all the way, like to the finals. We felt like we we're one of the top two teams in this tournament. Um, so we fell short from uh, against Team One, unfortunately. But we battled through against Wales and Mythic to come back and make it to the playoffs. Playing Chaos today is going to be uh, it's going to be a match. Um, it's probably going to be. A lot of sloppy rounds, a lot of sloppy counter strike, but it's gonna be it's gonna be a game we're really excited to play. And this is just great. Oh, CF, yeah. he took way too long, but he's still got a chance in it. Are they gonna face him? Surely not. One versus one. Oh, CF needing to clutch this out. It's a bit big win, but time's not on his side. They're hunting him down. They're on the point for it. And oh, RCF, yeah, he takes the gamble. It pays off massively there. And that was, yeah, showing us how they may be able to get it done. And even there, he mentioned about the overpass. They're well aware of it going down themselves. But I want to take it on one of our favorite moments when we get into the aim high from the US Air Force here, because this is our head-to-head -head moment where we get to look at two players individually from each roster. And this time we've picked Dumao and Jonji. And I know why, because Dumao, 17 years old, he gave us the interview yesterday. He is a star in the making if he can be utilized correctly. And Jonji, well, maybe when you look at the stats, it's not fantastic, but he has been some of the X factor moments that have pulled Chaos through on these games. It's the level of impact John finds in the game, especially when playing well. We've seen that in the Opass game, you know, when it gets out of hand, when it gets a bit too aggressive, he can be a, a bit of a, a a downfall for the team, you know, he can be a, a bit of a liability, I almost want to say, but he can also be that player on the server and on the team of Chaos that has the most impactful kills and the most impactful presence on the map, let me put it that way. Mm -hmm. So if he can continue the way he was playing in the second series, then they will have to shut him down somehow. And I guess uh, Duma will be a great pick for that because he's been playing so well so far. Yeah, Duma is an absolute beast. He's the highest rated player coming on this game, coming on this semi-final. And we talk about Jonji. I agree with you. I think Chaos, at the moment, they live or die through Jonji's performance. Mm -hmm. You can just keep an eye on his scoreboard, his stats, and you know, is it a good game for Chaos? Is it a bad game? And I'm always feeling a little bit, you know, sweaty behind the knees when there's one player that... <laughs> no, I knew that one was ready. We were ready team. for that one. It's a terrible But team. when one player just decides the fate of the game in Counter-Strike in general, it's not a good sign. I have waited to forever feel swept by my knees. It's obviously something that happens to you quite often. What I want to look at as well, though, is the veto, because All right. Swisher mentioned it just then. They have not won overpass. They <sighs> expect that to be picked. So why have your yeah, do you not just ban it so it doesn't happen? Okay. They've played each other before, five months ago. But the point for me I want to make on this Maniac is maybe yeah have been fooling us this whole time. They purposely lost well, over pass, yeah. And test. then they come onto Chaos and they're like, haha, pick it. All right. And slap them. Let, let's keep an eye on this because I had a couple of ideas for the, this ban and I am so, so happy to see the Inferno removal coming out of Chaos. I Sense. would not have wanted them to allow Ye Gaming to get it. Now, the nuke ban from Ye, I wasn't exactly sure. I thought Train could be a pick, um, uh, could be a, a removal, but actually, Overpass is going to be picked by Chaos and Mirage for Ye Gaming. So far, we had two maps for them where they really, really looked activated and in place. It was Inferno, it was Mirage. Mm -hmm. And the Overpass punish coming in from Chaos, I mean, We've talked about it. We've talked about the problems for you giving on that map. I'm surprised they went for Mirage instead of Dust 2, judging by the numbers, right? Because we've seen them play Dust 2 and they played that to a high level. We've also seen them play Mirage and they played that to a high level. But when it comes to Chaos, they look much, much better on a map like Mirage than on Dust 2. So if, if Yeah Gaming, you know, had a chance of punish picking a map into this series, it would have been the Dust 2. But they're going for the comfortable pick of Mirage. So as you said in the interview, you know, some scrappy Counter Strike, some, some intense Counter Strike, a lot of dual based Counter Strike, probably what's going to come in. I'm going to have some quick predictions here from you guys, and I'm going to start with Chaos because I think that overall they should be, on paper, the better team. They should be going for this last hurrah with no pressure on their shoulders. Yeah, I'll follow you. I think Chaos completely won that veto. First of all, I think the decision of removing Inferno is great. I think Yegami missed the mark, letting Overpass in the mix. Mm -hmm. So Chaos, all the way for me. Yeah, same here. I, I actually believe in a 2-0 for, for Chaos. They look like uh, the better team, and as they said in the interview, they haven't really played up to the level yet. So if they start to do that, Yegami will have to find something different than we saw yesterday if they want to compete with that. Well, we normally see this, right? You get to playoff stages, more games played, teams start to look better. Let's see if they deliver in the server. We all think it's going to be chaos, but are we going to be right? Well, we'll be finding out after the break.
We know the maps and we know what's about to go down. It's our first semi-final game between Chaos and Yeah Gaming. It's starting off on Mirage and it may be Yeah's pick, but it's certainly not going to be an easy fight for them. They've got the individuals that can step up from start to finish, but they need to deliver it in a bigger way than we've ever seen from them. And they cannot make the same old mistakes as before because Chaos are an entirely different team to go up against. There's going to be pressure from the get-go for Ye Gaming. absolutely. The premise for that sentence is that on Overpass, things have looked absolutely bleak for Ye Gaming any time we've seen them. So they have to win Mirage, they have to do it convincingly, and then we can talk about the possibility of a third map. I think that's the path to victory for Ye Gaming. it's to push on a third map. But Chaos, the players, the skill, the talent, they should have the numbers. I 100% agree. Mirage right here is going to be incredible, incredible important for Ye gaming if they want to push it to a third. Nothing tells us that they're going to be able to win over pass, so getting off to a good start here, getting the pistol round against Chaos, that goes a long way for Year Gaming, who are the underdogs coming into this game. Pistol starting out, and it looks like a beast bit coming in. Oh, Marky, starting off strong, still delivering a couple of nice headshots despite the pressure being put on towards him. The site has been swarmed, but Chaos are dealing with it very well. As Bu tries to escape, he takes a heady Zephyr. Outplaying with him, but how long can they play for? As Bu is now all alone with 27 health. I don't fancy his chances, and neither does Chaos. They get the pistol round, they make it look very easy, and they definitely had a good quick read on the situation. 1 0 start for Chaos. And as Jacob was pointing out towards the veto, we question the choice of Mirage. It had been the second pick, or one of the one of the two picks from Ye Gaming during this competition, so they either went for Inferno or Mirage, Inferno being removed. They stuck to Mirage, but it's a good map, it's a decent map for Chaos. It's a map that they all know how to play. Tonji being aggressive as we know him, as we like it to be, with the MP9. He's gonna go and make a little bit more money. And just like that, a clean, quick round for Chaos with max money. And this may seem pointless to say, but there's some players out there, Dupree is a great example for Astralis, for an example, that just lives by this confidence you get early rounds. So even if it's against, you know, pistols, no armor, with an MP9 and it's kills that pretty much any of us on the desk right here could have gotten, it just gives wow. Yonji confidence. I mean that from serious, you know, it just gives him confidence. Being nice to so look at his scoreboard, look at his scoreboard, see him at four frags and, you know, getting off to a good start, especially when you're a player that is entry fragging on the server, it means so, so much. Vanity as well, pushing up with Ooh. the teammate right here. They're gonna catch off Dumao and that may be one of the most important players to take out. Swisher finds a return frag right here and loses control over the B-bomb side, but he's gonna move in by himself and look at the rotation coming in right now. Bu have taken over short control and Chaos have lost a bit of control. Yeah, beautiful oh. timing found by Bu. Marky answers back. But John G, I don't think he's been detected. I don't think they have any idea he's in the window. So for him, it's about binding his time and waiting for the right moment. And look at this. Oh my god, Bu just... <laughs> He basically just exploded in front of him. RCF now, trying to buy him through the smoke, but that's a missed opportunity. Fight control though, it's gonna be had here. Farsin's been tagged up quite heavily. RCF goes down, it's no problem at all, but Zephyr is all alone in this position. Now he takes down the bomb, he's only got Farsin left to fight, who is very low on health, yeah. and Zephyr, he comes in clutch. It's a big kill for him to get, and remember, this was a bonus round Huge. for Chaos. They kept up with the same weaponry they had, straight in, Vanity grabs the AWP, they're stacked for cash, and they have an AK. That's absolutely huge for Chaos. And we could see from the get-go that they had a plan moving into this round, with the double drop down, underpass, pushing in with the MP9, finding that early kill, and then not, not letting themselves being outmoved, outmaneuvered. They rotate fast, and they still find the round. Zeppa with the 1v2 at the very end, hugely impactful. The absolute best start they could ever hope for. Surely that is. Another eco coming in from Year Gaming. I'm up behind these pistols this time around, so may have a better fight in them. Deagle as well in the hand of Dumao. We've seen the Deagles, especially in the North American tournament, be super, super good. They are some solid Deagle players when it comes to the North American Counter-Strike players. That's also why I think Chaos are showing a bit of respect right here. Johnny, of course, as per usual, he want to fight. He want to stay up the pot as he's been doing tournament long. Such an aggressive player. And as we talked about coming into this game, Matthew, a, a player that is going to be very, very important for Chaos if they want to win this one. Him playing well usually means Chaos wins. Yeah, he's an X-Factor. He's an X-Factor at that. Like you pointed out, I appreciate Chaos just playing the long range, playing the long game. 
It's gonna start with Junji and the M4. Just chipping away some damage. Vanity strikes first. That was towards Catwalk. Another opportunity missed of that. The Zep has doing the work. Oh. That is good trades though. Dumao just opened up the entirety of the site. Leave undetected up until that point. Strike at the right moment. Junji being boosted will dispatch of Dumao. In a round that looked thinkable, possible, dreamable. EA Gaming is taken right from their hands. Chaos stabilizing. Good job. Three players alive. And so far, they haven't really been tested. They've been in cruise control, cruising altitude. Too close for comfort, though, I'll be honest. Too close for comfort. You're being demanding. You're like being that. demanding. Hey, I want Chaos to sit in this position, right? If they really want to show us that they're going to come through and win this tournament, despite everything that's going on, it talks to them as a team because they said they want to stick together, right? But they're all in a position where they don't have an offer as a team. No one seems to want to pick all of them up as a five. So now, you need to do everything possible to shine that light and say, yo, we're over here. Throw that money our way. Pick us up. Give us a new home. We deserve it. So far, so good. They've been doing their job to excellence up 4 on their opponent's map picklets. Make sure we follow that storyline as well. Yeah, getting picked into Mirage, and as we already talked about, Overpass coming up no matter what. Not a map they've been looking good at at all, Yeah, Gaming. So finding success here on Mirage, that's almost a given if they want to win this series. And so far, it's not looking good. Mid control has been obtained and has been taken again, as we saw yesterday, time and time again. But what do we do from here? Then it's still a short on the control. Good smoke coming in right here. Now he falls back as well. And Seppa finds the opening. Leaf following up with another one, and it's already falling apart here for Year Gaming. Seppa going out for another kill. Takes down RCF to 17 HP, and what was looking like a calm and good default coming in from Year Gaming, completely dispatched already. Chaos did a great job at abusing the end of the smokes. With the not being refurbished in time, allowed Zippa to strike in and then Leaf as a secondary kill, winning his duel towards the A anchor. Everything looks to be under control for Chaos. Leaf with that pesky little off angle. We see Swisha is coming in absolutely oblivious to the danger. Leaf, maybe for a second one, cannot find the frag onto Dumao. The A side could be under duress, but it is Jonji towards the A side. He ramped now. He's got some backup in the form of Zeppa. We will probably take a little bit of action first. Dumao destroying Zeppa. We've talked about him and how skilled he is. Jiggle peeking, trying to. Ah, that's not gonna work. That's not gonna work because even if you win that duel, you ain't got no time. No time, baby. But an AWP into the next round, James. So far, so good for Kerns. They're looking like the team I guess we expected coming into the playoff. They said themselves that, yeah, they know in the group stage they weren't really playing up to pair. Then they said, yeah, we thought we won, you know, already. So we didn't play as focused as we probably should have been. And looks like that focus have been put onto this game and they're off to a very good start. Don't get complacent. And if you have Junji playing like the way he's been doing so far, relentless aggression, well, it's going to be good for them. Junji has taken the opening duel in 34% of the rounds up until today and still won over half of them. Yeah, he's an absolute beast. I think he's one of mm -hmm. the highest entry fragger of the tournament at the moment. Yeah. Uh, RCF is probably the only one above him because I remember his numbers are crazy. Just to touch upon the round before, as you pointed out, for Ye Gaming, they did take middle successfully, but what was missing is how to transition mm -hmm. into the next step of the round. When they were about to do so, Chaos struck from the side, Leaf and Zeppa together, combining for two kills, and that was it. So if Chaos are able to kind of control, to kind of block and defend that second step of the round, they're going to be off to a flying, flying CT half. It's all about disturbing, right? You're spot on. It's all about disturbing your opponents. They got mid control. They tried to transition into it, but as soon as that moment hit, you know, Chaos was ready with the mid-round aggression and disturbing the way Year Gaming wanted to play out the round. Now, Dumao with an AWP. Tries to find the opening right here. RCF is their main player with this weapon, but Dumao has been playing the secondary up role, so you can argue that it's fair enough that he plays with it this time around, but not able to find anything towards the B bomb side. Fasten, though. Ooh, what that's a, a bit of an opening. Wait, how is he here? How does no one realize? <laughs> how does Fasten oh, just, just make his way? I mean, he's going to miss a couple of shots still. Takes out Leaf. Now, finally wondering what the hell are you doing here? I did not allow you on my bomb side. It was a messy fight. A lot of HP being lost, but Zeppa finally puts an end to the madness. Swisher strikes in from Catwolf with the Deagle. And we talked about these pistol rounds. We talked about these half forced by Hero Superman in action. And now we've seen that happen so many times. Marky strikes from the smoke. Two quick kills. Great spray control. Peekaboo, he says. Great aiming by Marky right here, but also very risky. Let's be honest, with 40 seconds left to push through his own smoke with no backup from any teammates. That's a. Uh, 
that's risky, you know. It looks good when it pays off, but... Go big or go home. Yeah, that's the thing, right? Had he died right there, they could potentially have lost one of these rounds that we don't want them to lose in terms of the lack of investment coming in from Year Gaming. Already now starting to see small signs of that complacency Vanity was talking about. Vanity himself right here took the duel against Fasten as well with a USP and just kept pushing and pushing and pushing and got a bit lucky not to get taken down by Fasten. It, it seems like they're again, you know, showing no respect whatsoever to their opponents and you can do that if you're much better, but at some point, I think Yeah Gaming mm. have shown that they're good enough to punish it, so they have to be so careful with that. But do you think in some way that Chaos do need to play a little bit more aggressive than they would usually against a team like Yeah? Because we've seen what happens when teams give Yeah space yeah. and they get into the site. How deadly is Yeah over and over again? It's definitely a balance, and I think they did a fantastic job in the second buy round, as mm. Maniac was talking about, you know, disturbing the play, pushing in mid round and, and be annoying, you know, towards Yeah Gaming, but you don't do it in the end sequence. You don't do it in this mm -hmm. situation. Mm -hmm. What Marky did right here, that would be classified as, as a huge mistake. Had he died, the same for Vanity. Huge mistake, had he died. This time around, Yeah Gaming didn't punish it, and maybe that will lure Chaos into like a false feeling of security, but we'll see. So far, so good. 6 0, so you can't really criticize anything so far. Vanity. Huge kill. Losing the duel, though, Swisher opening up. Yeah, and he went out for the peak despite being half flashed there. Vanity thought he had a chance within it. I'm going to keep an eye on Ramp, by the way, here at A. How many times can Fastin? Get in undetected, and how far can he get each time? It seems like Leaf has more of an understanding this could be a case now. Zep also thrown out the incendiary grenade once the smoke went down, which is good. But if Fastin finds these little times he can work on, that can give them some sort of an entry into A on multiple occasions. Oh. Flash was missing. Oh, that could be it for Leaf in a duel versus Fastin. M4 versus AK, headshot versus headshot, but you lose the battle. So is the name of the game. RCF strikes in with the AWP. That was it. We had, during this round, a fake from Bu towards the B-bomb side. It was all a, a lure. It was a fake, as I say, because they had two anchors towards A, apps and ramp. Fast in winning that duel was the domino that they needed to start the effect with. Good round for me, Gaming. That is a good reference round. Mid-pressure, good utility, finding the kill onto a blind vanity, and then transitioning towards the A split. Now for Yeah, getting their fa first round on the board. Keeping five alive with it as well and continuing to do damage to Chaos. John's he's not able to slip away. Mark is just going to keep himself posted up in the B bomb site. Although he might find himself in a spot above it. There's still some time left. He pops up. He has a look around. Maybe he just wants to sit back now. Let's not take any risks here. Yeah, he's got to save. Look at the money yeah. situation, James. It's actually not looking too good. I mean, sure, the scoreline is heavily in favor of Chaos, and they have looked to be quite in control. But the truth is they've been pushed around just a little bit. They're going to have to throw everything they have into this round. Otherwise, we could be looking at a potential reset and he gaming their way back into the game. And this pause right here, that is exactly what I'm talking about. They realize how crucial that round is. Best in Brazil. Dumel had the best KD differential at the event coming into today at plus 60. Second place was RCF with plus 33. So even to compare to second place, he is miles above. And that's because even on the overpass games that were really awkward for Yeah, Dumel was the only one that just seemed to have a good idea of, I can still frag, I can still kill. Yeah, these two truly are the deadly duo. And I don't like to use the term, the term dependency, but in this time, it does look like RCF and Dumao have to perform in order for Ye Gaming to win. They need these two to be activated. So far, it hasn't looked too, too great. Four kills only for Dumao. And RCF is at 106. The man I'm talking about, the Wolf, getting boosted right here. Unfortunately, no one is going to give him the time of day. Missed opportunity. Vanity, he was the first victim in the last round. Doesn't fancy his chances. Jonji actually opening up. The double aid would be set up paying off big time for Chaos. Heavy lean towards the A side. That could be a consequence of the previous round. Chaos feeling like that could be a weakness abused. John G, my man, I appreciate you being aggressive, but you already have a way into this round. Swisher finding it first one. Oh, he no. sees the elbow and that's the second kill. Just like that, the round is falling apart. Too much stacked towards Connector there. Too far forward for Chaos. Two weapons lost as well. Zeppa only with the CZ. And it looks like Vanity's trying to get a move on towards B and, and hang back with Marky to save onto these weapons. Because like you said, the money was bad anyway. They forced up into it. And they, despite getting the opening kill, weren't able to do anything else off the back of it. 
they fell tr for the trap of what Swish wanted to play out into. Yeah, that was a bit about the balance we talked about when watching Chaos play. They got the opening, they were in a good position actually, and the weapons were spread around the map pretty well, and Yeah Gaming hadn't really decided whether or not they wanted to use middle towards B or mid towards A, but of course when Switcher walks into connect and finds two players who are overstepping their marks just a little bit, punish them, and at that point, you know, Chaos, they find themselves in a position where they do the correct play right here, which is to save. This gives Yeah Gaming a way into the game. They won a round. Quite convincingly, now the win number two as well. Let's see if Maki can get this kill. That could be good in terms of economy. Because otherwise, yeah, gaming, they're going to build the crowd of Ang already. Maki going for duel, you cannot lose this weapon. You have to stay alive. And they're going to push it from more than one side now. Vanity will have to watch from behind Maki as well. See if he can stay alive here. Two players are toying with the idea of pushing him, but they let him live. Two weapons brought into next round. But yeah, gaming with two rounds in a row, relatively convincingly. Off the back of Swisher right here, and yeah, we talked about it. The, the, the aggression, you know, it's cool, it's nice, and it looks good when it's working, but you have to find a balance where it doesn't cost you around that easily. It's just basically two kills from Swisher, and that's it, round over. It has to be a, dare I say, a plan B if it doesn't go the way you want to. Good start from RCF. He's been an absolute god in entry fragging. Zeppa, he's an elbow, catches the kill with the Deagle. Fasten is not quick enough to react. It's Marky and in another one. It's getting messy, it's getting scrappy. But as we like to say, one for one trades usually heavily favors the T side. Chonji only with that P2000. He dings him away. Somehow Bu takes completely surprised. He didn't expect that peak. And now it's all on to Dumao and Fazin. He's taking the B bomb side, avoiding that warning shot. What can he do? What kind of positioning can he gain? He's got the information though, at least for the teammate. But now they can be swarmed by Chaos. Oh, first shot hit. It's one nice little tap. Unfortunately, it wasn't a heady for Zeppa there as Jonji. He's making a lot of noise. He may have been heard at this point. And Dumao, he's on top of it. The young gun getting it done. Zeppa now wants to come from the same location while Vanity will try and keep him busy. They won't give him an inch, though. They're not showing work. their face. Oh, Dumao. It's going to work. Oh, this is beautiful. No. Oh, God. Zeppa, I know what you want to do there, mate. I get it. They did I get the round. It's really <laughs> around the paid off, but that knife. <laughs> Zeppa, I get it. I understand. But careful. So you can understand that clearly he, he's trying to look for the second yeah. you know, opponent before he strikes in. And I can understand that. But the timing he finds early on, being behind his teammate, five seconds delayed, six seconds delayed, he basically becomes invisible. It was very well played. Good rotation by Zeppa. He actually started from catwalk in that retake and then he jumped back to underground. Great job. I want to give it up for Dumao as well. Find himself in a two versus three year gaming that is. And Dumao is not afraid to take the fight towards the B bomb side and be proactive in a situation like that. It's his fault, I guess, year gaming in the first place. We're even close to win the round. So good to see Dumao playing well and good to see a year gaming fighting back despite being down seven to two now. This round is so important. The money are not looking good in the CT side if they lose, whereas if they win. Yeah, gaming, they will struggle after the next buy, so... The opening kill coming in here from Vanity is a good thing, of course, for Chaos. And once again, it feels like the default they want to play. Yeah, gaming can't quite make it work right now. Lost the opening duel a lot. Leave pushing the boundaries, though. A bit too much. Again, you have the opening duel and you, you go for the second mm -hmm. one again. It, it's not needed here for Chaos, but maybe the timing will work with him. Maybe he had a call from a teammate saying that they were towards B or something, oh. but... Look at the rotations. He got caught off yeah. that. Yeah, getting uh, absolutely outmoving their opponents right now. And this is a problem. If Jonji goes down here, B is completely free. Yeah, we're keeping it quiet. They may not even decide to hit B, though. They're going back for that mid control. They have no anchor towards the A side, which to me means that they will, at the end of the day, play towards B. Mm -hmm. We see Swisher is already in the B apps. And you're right, Jonji is completely alone. That smoke in itself is a huge tail. It's supposed yep, to be a safe marking. passage. But chaos. They're, they're playing mind games here, isn't it? It's a lot I mean, of this fake is out. actually faking the B-bomb side. That's what's happening. Swisher was just a fake. He was in the anchor. I got full. Zeppa, he's going to go down to the hands of Dumao, though. Jonji's able to strike, but this is all he's going to get for now. Mark just down. spotted out, but Vanity, he's done it. There's oh! not much time in Vanity. That is a shot and a half to hit. It's one they vitally needed. Swisher now out in mid. There's no time for him to play with. Jonji might just let him die after the time. If you can't get it done, 
And that's going to be bad for Swisher. Not ideal at all. Chaos do win the round. A bit of awkwardness at the beginning. The fake didn't work out. They kind of both mind game each other in this weird way. Congratulations, you played yourself. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> nice to see them trying though. I, I like that approach, you know, they're trying to, to step it up. Nice kills here by Vanity, but as a matter of fact, it was John Dean winning the round. He got a kill towards Connector and there was the bomb. They left the bomb in Connector with 15 seconds to go. So sure, Vanity got some nice kills to his name, but it was John Dean with the all important fracking Connector that more or less sealed the deal here for Chaos. Up eight to two now. Again, let's remind ourselves, Yeah Gaming picked into Mirage. Mm -hmm. They're supposed to win this because Overpass is coming up. And that's a map they have not been looking good at. So that's the pressure they play with right now. Yeah Gaming knowing that if we lose Mirage, it is going to look very, very dire and very rough for them to fight their way back into this best of three. And I don't want to be the Debbie Downer here, boys, but I remember Yeah Hit being me. the better side for T-Side, right? That's where we saw them have a lot of success. Sure. Those fast, very basic but explosive rounds. They've taken things a bit slower against Chaos. They had to. They had to because Chaos have been very proactive in their pushes, sometimes paying the price for it. We talked about it, how they, at times, would push the aggression. But it's forced Yeah Gaming into a position of respect. Now the A execute is happening, and we have three CTs dedicated to defend it. Vanity with the enemy starts off the best way possible. Fast in, minus 500 million HP. <laughs> now, second key for Vanity, good repositioning as well. He's waiting, wanting to go for a third, and why not? That was just a little bit too, too much. But look at this. This duel right here, James. This could decide the fate of the round. If Dumao finds Jonji, he's going to call for backup. He's going to call for everyone to join him. Oh, he just spotted him. Jonji saw him. Did he, though? Oh, maybe he didn't. He might haven't. Peripheral vision can be a trick. And Jonji wins the duel. That was the way in for Ye Gaming. Didn't no. work this time around. And Jonji will have to defend the bomb site by himself. I have backup coming in. Bomb is on the side. And if he can find the plan somehow, some way, there will be a chance for Ye Gaming. But Maki says no. RCF is not even following up. And at this point, James, it's all over. Nine yeah. to two. And as you so correct pointed out, that Seaside has been there main driving factor behind the Mirage win so far. And as of right now, it seems like they're getting outplayed, both in terms of the tactical aspect of the game. They're trying, but it's not really working out. But also, individually speaking right now, Vanity, Jonji, Maki for that matter, all the players from Chaos just seem to be at another level right now. And of course, that makes it even more tough for Yeah Gaming. I don't think they played a bad first half here. I just think they're facing a, a better team than they have played so far in the tournament. A tactical timeout from Yeah. You don't want to use it? They may be out soon, James, so you may want to sing a bit. Oh, you! Oh, wow! Here Just we trying go. to remind you, you have three even, to use. You're even trying to get me to do it. Yeah, well, interestingly, if you, if you do it now, and and maybe ooh, you know, oh, it changed like. Yeah, what? he's keeping us on our toes. <laughs> interestingly, that. Yeah's T side have been marginally 1.7 percentage points better than their CT side of Mirage in the last six months. Okay, I'm just going off what they did so far in this tournament. But thanks, Elliot. We're reaching for stable landing <laughs> at this point, and I appreciate the idea. But the truth is, as Jacob was talking about. Chaos are one step ahead at the moment. Individually, tactically, they're being disturbing, assertive, and successful in their endeavors. So everything is pretty much going according to plan. Vanity has been a name we've mentioned quite a lot on this broadcast so far, and rightfully so. He found a ton of entry kills and impact kills, and there is another opportunity for him. Missed shot. I thought he had it. RCF this time. Again, the highest entry fragger in the tournament so far. Strikes onto Marky. Good reaction coming out of Zephyr. Vanity, my man, what are you doing? Trying to jump out a window? <laughs> my man. My man. <laughs> That's really good. Wouldn't know if that's the real thing or not. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> we need you on camera doing that so someone can make a nice gif out of it. It's about patience, James. Just like Yeah Gaming. Yeah. Someone from Yeah Gaming. <laughs> We'll have to do something about this situation right now because they're finding themselves in a bit of a pain. Painful situation, let's put it that way. RCF fasten. Can't really find anything. And I think Chaos have done a tremendous job of not giving away too many peaks here. They got punished a bit in the two rounds they lost. And ever since, they've been adjusting, adapting, and they're playing well right now. Pushing out Catwalk, that was not asked for. Johnny, there you go. You want to do the mid round aggression once again? I can buy into that this time around. Didn't really pay off as much as they wanted to, but Leaf gets a kill. B bombsite is open, though. They spotted two players towards shorts, and that's why they're moving in now. Dumao with a deagle, sure, but he's in a good position. Vanity is waiting to strike from Catwalk with the AWP. It's going to give space for Leaf to pounce. Exactly. Good reaction from Dumao. Moving on to the two versus two. What can the deagle do? 
is actually the backup from the sniper that makes a difference. And indeed, that was an opportunity and a half. You might regret this chance. It's going in with the USP, switching over to the AWP, but the Jacob Peak doesn't work out. RCF is the hero of that round. Triple kill for him. And man, will they need him if they want to come back. Yeah, that was well played by RCF and Dumao as well. And they're reacting to what gets thrown at him, right? We gotta give some credit to Yeah Gaming. They may be down 9-3, but I don't think they've made a lot of mistakes. As said, they just faced the team who's been playing a little bit better. But I think it just got cast a curse big time right there. I just said Chaos have been good at not, you know, giving anything for free to Year Gaming. And just as I say that, two players push out short and gives up the B-bomb side. That was, again, not needed. You can buy into the concept of going for the mid-round aggression, and they did it together. So I'm not going to classify it as a mistake or anything like that. But I think it works better for Chaos when they don't give anything to Year Gaming, because they have not been able to take it without it being gifted. So in that instance, you know, it's, it's about finding the balance in the game. And right now, Chaos, of course, are off to a good start, but they have to be careful. 9-6 and we have a game on our hand. Seems like a long way away from 9-6, though. It's very true. Look at this. They're just scrambling. Yeah, gaming heard that sweet, sweet noise of the AWP. And now they're double backing. Backing down, second guessing. But John G, only armed with the Deagle, has single-handedly closed off the B side of the map. And this is why we see on the minimap so many silhouettes. So many CTs on the A side because Junji has all the information. So for Yeah Gaming now, it's about finding the shots. Good start from Swisher, that's exactly what they needed. The flashes will rain and they can take the space. RCF chimes in with the AWP and just like that, a situation that looked so grim could actually work out. Seppai is finding his best, jiggling at the edge of the smoke with Fasten is too quick. And here comes the flank, here comes the lurk. But will they expect it? The timing is amazing. So far, so good. I think in about three seconds he's gonna be spotted. Oh my god, welcome to four third. You're gonna get nine. And that's an AWP on the ground for Jonji. He sees the shadow into Sandwich, winning for the right moment. Where is Vanity towards CT spawn? Can they play off of each other in any way? Double Orb certainly could have been a chance there, but with Vanity going down, Jonji plays the smart decision. He doesn't want to stick around for too much longer. It will be a fourth round for Yeah, and because the money wasn't good for Chaos, that round was always going to be difficult, and now it becomes even more so. That 9 6 could potentially be a reality here. Yeah, and I think they, to be honest, I think they deserve it. I don't think Yeah Gaming have been been that far behind in this game. As said, individually speaking, some of the players from Chaos have really shown their class, shown that they may be better when it comes to the one-on-one -on -one duels. But as a team, I think the way Yeah Gaming have approached this game has been good. They've been punishing Chaos for the few mistakes they've made, and it's about a nice knife kill coming in here. Well, nothing Junji could do about it. 9-4, and as you said, James, the money are looking dire. They're not looking good, so it seems likely at least yeah, gaming gets towards five rounds, and then the last round will have to be decided whether or not it's the 9-6 or 10-5. And I think there's a big difference between those two scorelines, also psychologically speaking, right? 9-6, you're within reach with a pistol. 10-5, mm -hmm. it, it's, a, it's a bit of an uphill battle. Chaos need to try and pull off a miraculous round, at least in this one, if they want to keep the huge pressure up against Yeah and make their confidence get knocked just a little bit further down. I'll go ahead and say that is going to be a complicated situation oh, big for Chaos. They've just gambled towards the A side. Jonji tried to find some opening early on from Apps. And unfortunately, Yeah Gaming had other ideas. They had other plans. The B bomb side falls in about 25 seconds. And just like that, they should be cruising towards their fifth round, making it a possible situation for them to reach six when Chaos had all the cards in their hands early on. <gasps> Ooh. Leaf was Hello. Green. Yeah, but I thought they just caught the corner of him. One more player waiting out, though. Zeppa will try and grab himself the AK-47, but he knows he can't go up the stairs just yet. A couple of players looking to spot him out and finish him off. And he's still landing more. Headies for days for young Zeppa out here. And he's not done just yet. RCF's trying to give him more and more chances. He pushes on past. He grabs himself the weapon, but the nade comes out, and they get doubled on up. Swisher with a beautiful little Kobe to ensure Chaos couldn't take the extra guns into that round. And that was actually important, right? Because look yeah. at the money. They don't have a lot of money right now. Sure, they can all buy, they can get the M4s. There's an 8 p as well, but the lack of utility they're going to need right here. Cost wish I hit that nade. Fire Cost in the hole. None of these guys got to take off a weapon. That was important. It may seem like a silly detail, but Swisher did a good job right there. A lot of impact, and there we go. Fasten. Missing the shot, though. But got the information that right now Chaos have played aggressive. Yeah. And Yeah Gaming are reacting again. You're right, that is the reaction. That information being gained by Fasten triggers some sort of push towards the A ramp. Ooh. Dumao playing at the edge of the smoke finds one, but is quickly traded. So Chaos stabilizing the situation, pushing Yeah Gaming away from the A side. I thought 
the hit would come through, but they rethink the situation. They want to shuffle the cards once more and fancy their chances towards mid. John G is posted up there in ladder room with the M4. He's been there quite a lot, so maybe A Gaming have information on that. Chaos have elected to strengthen the A side quite clearly with two players. John G's along catwalk, and it's going to be Marky on the B side. But unfortunately for him, he's not going to see a lot of the action. Oh, John G, if he gets checked, the flash coming flash. through. The last GF missing a key shot. John G's being careful here. Oh, he doesn't know what to do. They're still missing shots. What is going on? Vanity's picked up one, but that doesn't really matter. There's a cross into A. They found their way in. And John G, well, he wasn't dealt with, but he was certainly confused. Bamboozled by everything that was going on. And how did those shots not connect? Poor RCF. Absolute bamboozle. The flash was perfect. And Ye Gaming in this round with the finesse, finding the second wave of attack through mid. Fasten is hiding in connector. And nothing suggests that John G is aware of the risk. Indeed, he isn't. Let me know, Marky. The life of a B anchor. Not seeing anyone. <laughs> Back up, going through smoke, die, and repeat. Rinse, repeat is certainly what happened on those last few rounds as Yeah Gaming did start to stabilize, but have they done enough? Find out after the break. The way you move, you gotta choose. If you want a boy or a man who's smooth, I see your smile. Don't be so shy. Let's give it a try. I'm not the kind of guy. Let's play a game, forget about names, this is my number, let's play. Only if you call me tonight, I swear I'll make you feel alright, nothing lasts forever, let's just be together. Girl, if you call me tonight, I'm waiting with the candlelight. Baby, you can call me tonight. Baby, you can call me tonight. Everything will be alright. Only if you call me tonight. Call me tonight. It's 2 a.m. Still waiting, girl. The wine is open. You gotta make a choice. This could be the night. Still have my number. Come on, girl. Only if you call me tonight. I swear I'll make you feel alright. Nothing lasts forever. Let's just be together. Girl, if you call me tonight, I'm waiting with the candlelight. Nothing lasts forever. So let's just be together. Baby, you can call me tonight. Baby, you can call me tonight. Tonight. Give it a try, give it a try. Come on, girl, let's give it a, let's give it a try. Give it a try, give it a try. Come on, girl, let's give it up. Baby, you can call me tonight. Baby, you can call me tonight. It is Mirage, and it is Yeah Gaming's pick. But Chaos have the lead, only just. 9-6 may look like a three-round lead, but that can quickly turn around after the pistol. And yeah, well, they've managed to step up on these last few rounds. Can they continue it? Momentum is a force to be reckoned with. Sure is. And therefore, this pistol round is also very, very important for Yeah Gaming. 
couldn't win the first one, but if they can win this one, as we spoke about, it's more or less an even game again. Chaos look like a team that want to split towards the A bomb side. Three players outside A ramp, and two guys coming up of connector. Marky oh, finding yeah. the first one. Pistol power. Chaos starting off strong, but can they deliver now? No, they can't, as Dumao comes in alongside Fastin and Swisher and shuts them down. The last two remaining players of Chaos want to try and take the fight. Vanity planting out in the open, and well, I'm surprised he's still alive, but it didn't last for long. Yeah, we'll get the pistol. We're still four alive, and the opener really meant nothing. You talk about momentum, James, and it does look like Yegeming are absolutely surfing on that wave right now. They seem confident. They seem extremely decisive in the duel they take. Fastened with the triple kill in that second piece around, ever so important, ever so needed. Really need the gap a little bit more. Only two rounds now separating them from Chaos. Because the bomb has been planted, there could be a purchase, and so it comes. Chaos have taken the route of the Galil, the UMP, and the MAC-10s. Vanity is going to stick on the Tech-9. And we have the Wall of Smoke being already used on the B-side. But look at Ye Gaming. They actually decided not to defend the B-side, and it's going to be a huge battle. It's going to be a carnage. It's going to be war out there as everyone is finding close quarter combat, and it is working oh so well for Ye Gaming. Four quick kills. They never had any doubt. Chaos, they couldn't find the kills. And just like that, the purchase is completely squashed. And I love that. I yeah. love that from Ye Gaming right there. Sit back, wait, because you know Chaos, that are gonna come, they're going to come towards you, sorry. So if you find yourself in a position where you're in the middle of a spot, you know, you're moving, well, that's when you're vulnerable to a Mac 10 or vulnerable to someone rushing you. But if you sit back and you wait, you just wait for Chaos to run into your crosshair, the likelihood of you winning those duels are much, much higher. And that's exactly what Year Gaming did right here. That was so well played. And it's becoming a little bit too one-dimensional for Chaos, right? You know that's going to come. You know that it's going to rush at you, that it's going to be aggressive all the time. And Seems like to me, yeah, gaming can figure that out. Oh, wow, fast hidden. Okay, I know they're on pistols, but just through the smoke, he's just shutting them down. He's just tapping away, spraying them out. This is the fast thing you should be scared of, where he's confidently taking the jewels even when you've got pistols in your hands. And that's one thing, right? Sometimes you go into eco rounds, and I'm just like, okay, just get it over and done with. When it comes to North America, I've you genuinely enjoyed the pistol rounds because you never know. it makes us scream and go crazy because we don't know what's going to happen. Wow. Look at this, look, look. Whoa. Wow, that was actually yeah. really nasty. Fasten, just cleaning him up, racking him kills. And the, the money situation is absolutely stellar for Ye Gaming now. Everyone has either more or equal to 4.4 thousand, which means they basically have a free repurchase already lined up if things went south in this round. Chaos just take, taking the traditional route of taking mid control with two anchors towards the A side. And John is playing over. On the B side, he might be able to attack. Actually, he went down underground and that mm. leaves some space for the Mao. Oh, the They're not nine. playing together though. That was interesting. Bu just went out to his death. I thought Fastin might stick around to help him out a bit there, at least try and get the refrag. But maybe they were scared of being overwhelmed because plenty of Chaos bodies out here in mid. Fastin now wants to move himself over towards B in case that hit does come in. But for now, it seems like more of an A play could be coming in. And Jonji may be the one to try and start this off. Smoke's going to go out. Molly off. But look at RCF, his adjustment. He decides that he needs to make a move, and he does exactly that. He picks up the kill, and that's not going to work out for John G either. Swisher deals with him nicely, but now he might be pinned in between a couple of players. RCF walks out into his death, does not expect the player to be there. They're fooling around, but they're still trading it out. Fastin trying to do the his bomb. best with Doom out there, getting the bomb on the ground, and that is the worst-case scenario for Leaf. Can they fall victim to Leaf's oh, rotation? Oh. Fastin, he's locked on in. I think that's going to be it, James. If Leaf wins that duel, he might get with a second one. But Fastin oh. is too quick on the trigger. Round number 10 for Ye Gaming, who takes the lead for the first time in this game. Fully deserved as well. I think Ye Gaming have done a tremendous job finding their way back into this game. They were down 9-3, if I'm not mistaken. Now they lead 10-9, to so they won seven rounds in a row. And as I said, even when they were down in, 9-3, to three. it felt like they were still, you know, on pair. Felt like they were still matching Chaos. They just lost the duels, and now that has turned. Chaos are not able to win the individual duels they're making. I wouldn't even say mistakes, but they're just facing Yeah Gaming, a team that's playing well right now. Vanity close to catch off two players. Couldn't quite connect the shot. That was a big chance, though. RCF finally killed this game. Does fasten. Leaf returns with a kill of his own, but still 
4 versus 3 and no map control have really been gained by the terrorists and here we go. Vue and Dumas with a kill lead. Seppa left alone. 46 HP. Picks up an AK-47. Has armor, so a little bit of firepower. Ooh, Hello. that was a nice shot, but damage has been done. Economical damage that is, but yeah, Gaming picks up another round. Make that eight in a row match here. They're playing well. They are fully in control right now. Duels left and right going their favor. And Chaos, even though finding the first kill in that previous gun round, were a little bit disjointed when they decided to attack the A-side, allowing Ye Gaming to pounce individually and find some cracks, find some mistakes. For Chaos now, it's very important to tighten up the ship, mm -hmm. to play together, to play the trade game. We know that they have the individuals. They have shown it many, many times. Yeah, for last CF. You know he's gonna go for these opening kills. We've talked about him as being one of the most aggressive players we have on the server. It's two for four in opening duel so far. Doing a decent job, but not up to the standard we've seen. Him and Dumao, the two players right here pushing towards the B bomb side. As Matt, you said, you said it yourself, they are the X Factor players, right? They are the win condition. For yeah, gaming, but right now as a team they play well and Fasten is pushing down A again. Everyone is pushing. So Fasten is taking A ramp control. Dumao is pushing B, hmm. which means that by process of elimination, Chaos have to play towards middle. It's either A apps or mid. There should be no questions. Fasten and Dumao will soon high five in T spawn. <laughs> and Bu now absolutely 100% sure that Leaf is playing in the apps. That could just be a meat grinder. But fortunately for Chaos, they have found the perfect oh timing no. for the defense wasn't in place. And Marky and Zippa combined for two key opening kills. I have no idea how they bounce out of that situation, but it is still in play. They're not out of the woods just yet though, Maniac. Vanity's low. They may have site control, but they've got three players, including Dumal, Farsin, and RCF to deal with. Those are names that I would not be wanting to go up against in a situation like this. Time's not really on their side, but they've got a good amount of utility here. Kids in play as well, but they need to find where some of these Chaos players are hiding. Farsin continues to scope around, and oh, they're playing the smart game. They're playing the long game. Despite the money being pretty good overall, yeah. they're going to save the weapons. They know that it was taking too long. They couldn't get an initial pick, and actually Vanity will just go down anyway, so they're doing damage despite Chaos picking up the round. I think, yeah, made the smart call here. It got to that timing where they just weren't able to get it done. They knew it would be too hard. They made the most out of their tough situation, no doubt about that, and... Chaos finds a round, sure, but it comes at a price, as you said. You lose two players and the money is still not building up to the point where you want them to be. It's looking all right. There's still a decent amount of money on the side of Chaos, should they lose, but not enough for them all to buy. So, yeah, Gaming have a great opportunity of once again putting on pressure towards Chaos. And as you said it so well, you know, they're pushing everywhere. And the protocols, you know, the, the rule, I guess, and in Mirage is that if you push A, you don't push B and vice versa. But they don't care about the rules. They play their own game and... As you said, you know, maybe with a bit better timing, they could have shut them down in the middle, but use a lot of manpower pushing A and B at the same time, so they were vulnerable when it came to the split. Chaos have just found once more a very fortunate timing. Dumao is going to kick things off, eliminating Marky. That's the B danger completely eliminated. And Chaos, well, I knew they had a timing, but obviously they didn't, because <laughs> I see everything. I am Thorn's eye. Smoke's being deployed towards A to shut off Connector. Zeppa wandering around with the AK now. It is Bu towards CT spawn and Fasten on the stairs. He's been an absolute unit. He's been a beast. And now he's going to be absolutely wrecked by Zeppa's AK. RCF negated by the smoke. Cannot find any impact so far. And the A side belongs to Chaos. Once again, they found success. They found their way in. Does Yeah really want to fight this again? Squish are looking to try and tag someone up through the smoke. Little does he know, no one will be waiting for him. This will take some huge mistakes from Chaos to give away. Their positions are strong. From every angle, there's a refrag opportunity, and Yeah won't push in again. They're going to continue to save. They're going to continue to play it smart and hold on to as much money as possible because they should be able to rebuy two guns again. I love it. I love it. It's smart. You know, in, in this position, again, the chances of them winning this round are so, so small that you don't want to go for it. You want to see if you can punish Ooh. one of the players from Chaos. Hello. The answer was no right there from Vanity. <laughs> he was ready for that one. He's like, you did me last time. I'm not going to let that happen again. Now, that could have been the tipping point, but Fasten is at 9, 9k, so he'll be able to afford a weapon. Maybe even two, and they're going to go for another buy. RCF can buy himself, so no damage done in that sense when it comes to Yeah Gaming's economy, but... 
I guess the rule of thumb is that when you survive three players, you can definitely buy the following round, but if you only survive two, there's a chance that you don't have money to buy up. That kill right there. That was fast. That's beautiful, yeah. He's slowly but surely starting Ooh, to warm up. Double orb setup in play now for yeah. That's what they want to try and do here. Vanity needs to be real careful. It's the, it's the deadly duo that's rocking the two snipers, RCF and Dumao. We've talked about them and how much Ye Gaming rely on their performances. So far, it's been good, but not quite good enough. 11 rounds apiece, moving into round 23. And I like that Chaos. They've realized, they've identified how Jägermin want to play so aggressively, so they just step it up a little bit. They take their time. Mm. They calm down the situation. Remember, they are the most experienced players out there. If time comes into action, if there's pressure on Jägermin, they might do the mistake. And I think Chaos are aware of that. Run boost going out, Vanity. Able to just scope around. Takes a shot out into the smoke. It won't connect with anyone. They're just going to wait it out. Yeah, though, not looking to give him an opening here. They want to make sure they keep things nice and chill. Bew pops out, finds his own. It's Vanity that goes down. That's a big scalp to take, at least. Or put on the ground. But he's instantly traded. Still the double orb set up in play for the CT side. And it could be a B hit that's coming in from Chaos. Swisher in a nice position. And Dumao with the big green in his hand. Easy first kill to find. Zephyr had no chance of getting away with that one. The push comes through, but Leaf, wow. that's the vital kill. This could be their way in. And Dumao, he has to hit this one. He's getting challenged. He's getting pressured. He's getting pushed around, but he needs to land the key shots. The young gun can't get it done. And Chaos now have the B site control. The smoke is going to push RCF away and cloud his vision. And they just cannot win out these duels. Chaos are managing to make the most of this. This round, scream experience for me. You could see the experience coming out of Marky. The way he was jiggle peeking towards short, knowing that the AWP was the only threat behind the side. And the longer he was staying alive, he was giving time to the rest of the attack to yeah. pounce on the side. That was stellar from Marky. Even though he didn't have any kill, he's got my point for this round, because staying you. alive was the key. Exactly. Yeah. You saw Leaf as well, you know, not falling for the bait from Dumao as well, taking the AWP shot, falling back backside, had a mate on balcony, and Leaf just hardcore cleared him mm -hmm. when coming out. Lots of players, lots of teams would think, okay, that's the sole defender with the AWP on the B bomb side, but Leaf, he checked and he was rewarded for that check as well. So many different players in that round, as Match just said, playing well. Junji, of course, with four kills, you gotta give it up for him as well. Got it done. And now Chaos find himself again in the lead of the game. 12 to 11, and in money control. Yeah, gaming will have to do with the deagles and again fast and he's been so aggressive <laughs> towards the a-bomb side pushing palace pushing ramp a couple of times as well the question is will he be met by Ooh. vanity i think he will and there we go yeah connecting that shot good job and the thing is we've seen fast do this multiple times not in this game but in mirage mm. specifically right he's always trying to on these antico rounds push out so vanity obviously done a bit of homework there obviously aware that this could be the case and swish up well he may be tapping away with the deagle but he's not going to find much success him and Bew trying to work together towards window. I feel like Chaos are being very disciplined right now. They, they understand. They understand that it is the key moment in the game, and no mistakes will be allowed. And so far, so good. They're cleaning up sides together, making sure that every angle is checked and accounted for. Vanity absolutely destroying Dumao through the wall with the AWP, and just like that, Ye Gaming have no say in this round whatsoever. Sure, some damage has been inflicted. 44 HP on Vanity, 50 on Zeppa, 64 Marky, 61 Leaf, but no kill. Bew could hope for some kills, but unfortunately hope is the only thing he's got for him. And now it's RCF, long distance duel with the Deagle. And the 1 HP will not be enough. After a huge comeback from Ye Gaming in the first half, pushing on the first gun round, winning this entire eco round, now it's Chaos who are answering and taking back control. And they really are, right? You even saw it then against the Deagles. They're flashing despite they've got the plant down. They weren't just hunting for the kills. They knew that Yeah could be close to them around any corner and they wanted to deal with them efficiently in the best way possible. Completely eliminate oh, all chances no. of mistakes and Maki hitting a nice shot through the smoke. Bew trying to go out and see if he can do something about it, but that's not the case here. Uh -uh. John G and Vanity sneaking up towards A. Well, in fact, that's not sneaking. That's just brute forcing their way up towards the A bomb site. Fasten will have to give it up, and they'll have to play the retake now. Puts in a defensive smoke. Bew connecting a shot on towards Leaf, and that's a good opening right there. And Fasten is pushing and pushing and pushing. Almost gets the bomb up before planning, but... Oh! 
He's made this winnable. It certainly is now. Vanity all alone. There's lots of players coming out towards him, and he's only going to get one. Yeah, bounce back with a crucial round, and that comes off the back of Chaos getting a little bit too fast. You saw that smoke coming in from Fast, and I said that's a defensive smoke. It's one of those smokes that is just annoying to be up against if you Chaos, because not a lot of players throw it, so there's probably no protocols in play as to how to react. And you can see not a single player from Chaos was aware that Fast could just push up CT spawn, take out the bomb planner. You saw a guy right here running with his back to him. That would be John G. And, and it was a very well played scenario right here by Fastin. But then again, Chaos, right? They let themselves stress in a situation like this. And it, it is a game that is just back and forth. And it's the small nuances right now that's going to decide who's going to win. I think both teams so far played well. And yeah, gaming is definitely not out of it. Chaos want to pick up the pace. There's been a MAC-10 purchased on oh. Zeppa, and that to me means the B-Rush. Leaf is charging in with the AK. Suspicion completely blind. We'll find the first kill onto Zeppa. Fastin is helping him out. Leaf is doing as much work as he can. Chim oh. clearing, missing a couple of key shots. Swisher is burning, but so far, the rush has been controlled by Yay Gaming. Chaos threw everything they had in this round. But unfortunately for them, they are met with bullets, met with fire. And they double back. What a play from Swisher right here. Staying alive for so long is so important. You could argue Leaf had a, an opportunity to get a kill right here, but he was being pressured from both sides, so you can understand why he may not was as calm and composed as he would have liked to be. And now Chaos, they have to rethink, what do we do now? No utility whatsoever. A man down to 16 HP and two AKs in place. Sure, it's possible. Some great trade fracking and maybe a great opening. And we got a round, but... Right now, Yeah Gaming, they're playing it smart. Defensive towards CT spawn, making sure no flank is coming in, and then there's a player on the A-bomb side who's not sitting open anywhere. His back is sort of covered, let's put it that way, and Marky Hill oh running no, into trouble. Oh, timing. Oh, timing. Oh, he just left his position now, wide open. No. Fortunately... Do they go? They go together. Don't tell me they'll do it. Oh, do mal. That is the best timing, but the it. shot is missed. And now it's going to be all on Tuspisha. He's in an absolute unit so far, and all things are under control. Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> deep breath, deep breath, Swisher is here. If Dumao had not turned around, he'd be dead, and they would be pushing on into a site together. Chaos now in a position with 13-13. Things are certainly not looking pretty. Swisher dealt with that oh so well. So well played by Swisher. I said staying alive in the beginning of the round. Giving the info, making sure not to go down. As soon as he falls, he falls with the B-bomb side. As long as he stays alive, that's good. Once again, trying to pick up the pace towards the B-bomb side. This time, just for a peak vanity. Couldn't connect that one. A nice jump coming out of the CT player. Making sure not to show too much of his head. And as by then, vanity couldn't hit him. They went for the buy right here with a bit of limited utility, but still a very strong buy coming out from Chaos. And as said, 13-13. It's going to be all these more details that's going to decide this one. John D. Falls to Swisher again. This man right here on your screen, he's been playing so, so well in the last couple of rounds. This time around, though, Lucky staying alive. Down to 13 HP, but alive he is. And John G. is down. Five versus four to take the lead one more time for Yeah, Give me make that a five versus three. This is where it gets problematic for Chaos. They're running out of rounds. They're running out of opportunity. They're certainly running out of cash as well. That loss bonus will start to stack up as yeah have made a comeback into this fast in. Whoa, 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 very slow on the reactions there. But that could be it. Yeah, that 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 might be the potential for an opening here. I don't think they suspect Bu to be so close up and personal. So he might have the opportunity. He's whoa, gonna get some whoa, backup whoa. from RCF. Does he realize in how much danger he's in? He is Meanwhile, completely surrounded. RCF's got a bit of backup towards him, but Leaf's already come through. And Marky can't be activated right now. He can't be because oh, he's he saw the gun. waiting for it. He saw the gun. And RCF deals with it. No hope at all for him now. You still in the spot and his position is not known. Ten seconds ago, they will just save on to the AWP. And yeah, we'll grab a 14th round. Starting to look very, very good for Yeah Gaming right now. Up to 14, regaining the lead for the second time in the game. And chaos when it comes to the money. No bomb plant. It's tough. I say the LWP, they can go for a buy right here, but would you do that? Would you Would you rather not go for some Tech-9, some armor, see if you can let Vanity play with the orb and, and give yourself a full chance, a full buy round coming into the next one? Yeah, if, if they have an AWP like, like it is the case, you might as well just go for pistol buy and hope that the AWP gives you a way into the round. You steamroll with the guns, you pick up a couple of rifles and suddenly you might have a round 
to play with. And apparently that is the solution that they choose from. But Vanity, you're going to be needed. Heavily influential in this round. Run boost again. Chaos going through the motions of taking mid control. They will be met by Bu, who smells shenanigans. He understands that this could be a timing. I think he saw a leg. Bu, in that duel ever so important. Curve of damage exchange. Zeppa found the timing towards Catwalk, but the information is out there. So it's going to be no element of surprise. Chaos are building massively through mid. They have all the map control in the world. And look at the two players from Year Gaming pushed deep inside BF. So Again. they control that area, but it leaves Bu alone with an AK-47 to defend. That could be a bit of an opening. A side is vulnerable as well, and they're pushing A again right. Not quite sure what's going on right here, but it's working out right now. Dumao almost getting caught off guard. Stays alive though. Bu Ooh. gets taken down by Leaf. And now it's up to Dumao to defend this B bomb site. That's an opening right there. Dumao the player, you would want to hold this site though. He's been oh so good over and over again. Jonji's only going to get one on to Elds A. And Dumao, he can still be the nuisance. He can still keep him also busy. He's not even decided to strike just yet. Oh. He pops on out. He sprays him down. And yeah, get the 15th round. The timing right there. The timing when they both reload. They both are unaware that he's coming out. That was great play by Dumao. But Matthew, that wasn't the most clean antique around ever. It was hard. It was hard. It was messy. And I think that was the game plan for Chaos. They played from middle towards A and towards B. They had lurkers and duels all across the map, but Ye Gaming did a great job at stabilizing. They pushed the B apps, which allowed them to not be too, too stressed about it for a moment. And I've been very impressed. I've been thoroughly impressed by what Ye Gaming put together in this map. We talked about the difference in some maps, and for now, Things are looking good. They could be on their way to a 16th round, but RCF has to step oh. up massively. Marky, uh -oh. this point fast and leaves the AWP alone. There's no backup for him whatsoever. Might be on to Swisher to save the situation. 2v4, Vanity is low though. A site has been secured. They don't want to take too many of these fights. They want to save onto their weapons because their money is not great. They don't want to deal with a stacked up Chaos despite them being on the 15th point. They want to be able to close it out 16-14. Chaos want to do everything possible to make this as difficult as they can for Yeah. And money-wise, it is extremely important Dumao gets to save this weapon. Bu don't have anything to play with. Dumao himself is low on money and so is Fasten. So if he loses this AK-47, it's going to be a very scrappy buy going into the, I guess, most important round for both of the lineups. So for Dumao to save this AK, that's going to be so vital. It's started right here and he gets oh, taken out wow. as well. That's going to hurt. That's going to sting. As said, the money are not looking good on the CT side at all. They have to make a choice. Do they drop an AWP for RCF, who then could have a Kevlar, but Swisher would absolutely be, or absolutely hold, yeah. the short end of the stick, or RCF going for a glass cannon? RCF or double decides o. to go for the... <laughs> wait a minute. They went for double AWP, no Kevlar. So it's going to be do or die, hit or miss for Ye Gaming. Can the AWP be the saviors? Can they be the X Factor? RCF, again, trying to take the first peak, trying to have an impact early on in this round. Ooh, but Chaos, the they will deny him that possibility. Fastin is going to have to come up huge alongside Bu if this A hit comes in fast. Swisher looks to reposition himself. But will it even be enough? They're on time. Oh, they're all here now, though. This is going to be a brawl. This is going to be a real fart. RCF only gets one. And Marky's found his way in. A Swisher, huge miss. They're getting pistol whipped by Bu, but is it going to be enough? Oh. The fight continues on, and Dumao is the only one left. He just has a deagle and a smoke in his hand. Surely he can't pull this off. The young gun starts off strong. Headshot delivered. He's working his way around, but he's still got two players to find. He's got no kid as well, but there might be one on some of his teammates' bodies. If he can get a weapon, there could be a chance as Vanity is still tucked away. Zeppa now, shoulder being oh. seen. Dumao looking to clutch it out in style. There's certainly a good opportunity. Oh. Vanity hits it with the no scope, saving the day as the young gun nearly gets it done. But we're still going to overtime. 15 15, and we'll see how this will conclude after.
At different points within Mirage, Chaos were in the lead, but they were not able to pull it across the line. Yeah, hit 15 first, and then Chaos bounced back. Now we're in OT, and yes, this is Yeah's pick. Yes, both of these teams have fought hard, but who wants it more? Are they going straight for the B rush? That's going to be a straight up B rush. Perfect flash. RCF is completely blind. He's got no idea what's going on. Do you know as well? Just left crying. It's like, guys, please give me some help. Do my trying to bring that help with the AWP. Whoa. Marky will take him out. It is a brawl. Everyone dies in a matter of three seconds. <laughs> what is this madness? One minute, 28 left on the clock. Chaos is smiling because, yeah, just got hit by a drive by. Is that the fastest round we've seen on Mirage? That definitely. is. Elliot, come definitely on, help one us. of them. Definitely one of the fastest rounds we've seen on Mirage in a long time. I feel in this tournament, I like Chaos, you know, having the, the, the balls to just rush out, be, in, be straight up forward, you know, no need to mess around, no need to play the long con, no need to outmaneuver your opponent. If you can just rush in B and put that fear in towards your gaming already now, they have to be afraid of it. Look at this. Swisher and another player towards the bottom side is just ready and waiting should it happen again. Mao gets a flash and gets a peek in here. Now they maintain control of the B apps, but by the looks of it, Chaos want to go back. They want to try again. This time, just a bit more delayed. You also have to think about the high, high possibility that your opponents will do a double AWP setup on the first round of overtime. So what is the way to counter it? Is to rush B. This AWP that I'm talking about, Ooh. this time finding the impact. Duma will put John G on the ground. 5v4, just a minute to play with. So for Chaos, it's about retaking some map control. They have Leaf over onto the A side of things, A apps, which leads me to believe Chaos will try and play the A split. Fastlin. Oh, the timing. He's just got saved by RCF. Perfect setup. Great courage coming in from RCF. And now Maki, Sepa, and Vanity, they'll have to try to find an opening. Playing down two men. That's tough. Vanity inside the window, but B is waiting. That duel is not going to miss. The refract coming in from Maki. That's a bit of an opening, though. Still four versus two. 
mark his position. Is now known as well, so it's gonna be tough. No idea they're sitting a player waiting over there in the noob corner. RCF in towards CT spawn as well. Get Mulsev out of position, so left to himself. Unsight is fast, in, but they have no idea. He's getting one, and he's getting a second one as well. Great spray control coming in from fast, and good round from Year Gaming. Dumao founding the opening as well. That was much, much better. And if you're Chaos right, you rush B, that works. You try to play a default, that doesn't work. What do you do now? Do you want to go for another rush? <laughs> Please don't rush B. Rush A, rush middle. Do anything, just don't rush B. I have an idea. I think they're going to rush middle. They're going to do some sort of fast split towards the bomb side or something along the lines. And a timeout being used as well. They want to discuss it. So, James, what do you think? What's well, your bet? I think Elliot has brought us some more stats. Sick game, all discipline. Only three teams in World CS have been worse at converting 5v4s this year than yeah. That is unfortunate. It is unfortunate if you think about the amount of entry fraggers they have on RCF and Dumao. If they could just close these rounds, that would be a huge factor for them. Yeah. That's actually oh, another very... timeout, back to back. That's great to yeah. see. Two timeouts, back to back. Maybe some uh, discussions, some democratic votes as go, to what's go, the course of action. Can we get all their cameras to see if someone's just gone to the toilet? Where do you want to know that? <laughs> what do you want to <laughs> peek? <laughs> you, you said about it. FBI Certain members just of your team behind just the used to disappear and go to the toilet <laughs> rather than play. Well, we can have a look at the stats as we have them in front of our eyes. Dumao, 28 kills. Fasten, again, Beast, 25 kills with the rifle. And it's Leaf and Zeppa leaning by example for Chaos, 25 and 23 respectively. An ADR that is quite distributed all across the board for Chaos. Bit more uh, skewed for Gaming. Jacob talked about a fast mid-split, possibly for Chaos. Judging by some of the utilities, they're gonna fake the B side. There is a fake happening. Oh, but Jonji wow, has to everything. fail the ID. They've used two smokes, three actually, and Jonji pulls the rotation. It's worked out. Dumao is clearing towards mid, and Bu is already on site. And now they're gonna hit the A side. Fasten is oh. all on you, and he's been absolutely massacred. RCF alone with the AWP, he's gonna have no backup in the next five seconds. He needs to stay alive. Puts down the smoke. Will be wall banked. 17 HP. I think he's done it. Dumao managed to deal away with Jonji though, that's a big one to pick up. This aggression being shown. Marky, does he want to risk it? You've got the advantage now. Hold on and hold strong if you can. Because there's only two more players to find. He makes some noise. He steps away. The bomb's going to get planted. RCF throws up a closer nade. They're both attacking from the same side. Oh, great shot landed by Vanity. Pops up, get it done. He's going to push up into it. And Chaos get the 17th round of the half. They'll swap on over now. And this is where they started off so good before. Curveball. We had the conversation. You rushed B, you won. You made a default round, you lost. So what do you do? You don't rush B, you fake it. Yeah, we didn't say that, did we? <laughs> no, we didn't, but that's, that's nice thinking by Chaos. And I guess that's a direct consequence of the double timeout. They were discussing, they were planning, and they executed so, so well. Good job on Chaos. And now, moving over to their CT side. Of course, it more or less half an hour ago we saw them play that side, but if I don't remember correctly, Venom was struggling a bit, a little bit finding impact. This time around, though, he is not waiting around. He's going for the duel and he's going to get taken down in just a matter of seconds. No! Somehow, some way, Bu couldn't connect the shot. Maybe he was blinded as well, and Venom gets away without taking a single point of damage. Highly surprising. You spoke about it as well, Maniac. With 16k, the double op setup, mm. it's so easy to buy. It's so it. doable, and Vanity finds the kills towards Dumao. That's a very important player to take out. Dumao has, in my eyes, been one of the most influential players in this game again for a year. Now he's out of the server. The rest will have to do the work for him. Oh, Marky. No. Oh, Marky, do you fancy a chance in a 5v4? Swisher cannot believe his luck. How many times have we seen Chaos? push out when they've had the advantage. Okay, John G, that's a great shot to pick up. This is helping for sure, but we should be looking at 5v3 right now, not 4v3. Let's see it. Fact. Fact. Let's see the consequences of that move. Still very much in control. Zeppa pouncing at the right time. RCF is out of the picture. Fasten. So quick with the AK, but cannot do anything in this round. Things look to be in control after shaking just a little bit for us. Bu, unaware of the situation, missed opportunity for Jonji, and that's going to be a kill for Bu. 
He's picked up the AWP. He doesn't want to plant the bomb quite yet. Realizes he's got to make a little bit more. Oh my, oh my. He had the right idea, but not the right angle. Yeah, this is the problem. I don't think he expected the Zephyr to be that close. Now it's chaos for the first time on match point. They didn't make it there last time. They had to drag themselves into this position, into overtime. But it is Yair's pick. And you've got to remember, boys, you haven't touched on this too much. It's overpass next. And we know a team that cannot play overpass to any high level. We haven't touched on it just like Yegami didn't touch it. <laughs> they didn't touch it in practice. You guys are being harsh, huh? <laughs> fact. No idea what fact. you mean. <laughs> well, the fact is, it wasn't looking too good yesterday. Another fact is that it's a small world. Bio's first ever recorded game was against Junji's. Run inside, and Junji's team took it, it on OT. So, small world, I guess America is uh, pretty big. I wouldn't say it's world, quite a big but country. A big country, Coming but from Switzerland. First game ever, yeah. Playing against each other, there's some uh, some revenge to be had, maybe. We'll see about that. 18 to 16 now, yeah, gaming. They have two rounds to deal with. Same goes on for Chaos. They just need one of those going their way, and then they will move into overpass their own map pick. As James said right here, yeah, gaming were the ones picking into Mirage. Leaf going aggressive with the AWP in towards A Palace. Denying them the control, but question is who's gonna wait out for who here, and is he ready? In the meantime, John G finds a kill towards Leaf through the wall. Must have been a nice shot. We didn't get to see it, but that's a good opening for John G. Haven't had as much impact today as he had the other games, but still finding it. And there we go. Back we again. It again. This it time works. he wasn't punished, yeah. But oh again, my. it wasn't a smart decision, but he gets away with it. You got to pull a lockdown on these rounds, boys. You have it under control. Five versus three now. The mid has been taken. View trying to fight for his life. Leaf with the AWP being punished. So so good, Farsin, he can't get anything done from there. It's an instant one and done. Swisher now, 1v4 and Swisher, we've seen you pull off some amazing feats, but this is just too much to ask. This is gonna be the biggest test for him yet. Maybe if they make some, some mistakes and push out into him, he might have an opportunity with it. And that's the first one gifted. Vanity jumping around, playing a bit of KZ. He's faltered. And now Swisher, quick movement. He's playing his own. Oh my, nearly. If he got the timing on that, that could have been a chance. But Chaos do pick it up and they manage to walk away with their opponent's map pick. It certainly wasn't pretty at times, but overall Chaos did look like the better team. And Maniac, I have that same feeling that you told me, right? Yes. When you watch Chaos, it never seems like it's over for them because they've always got some weird way of making something work that shouldn't work, yeah, even know, when they throw away stuff. It feels like they have that, that nitro button in the car that they can hit whenever they want. Mm. It, you know, things push comes to shove and they just go <laughs> and they go absolutely massive. They win the game, but we still have to talk about how hard and tight and close that was. We will talk about all of that and some more when we come back after the break. We started things off with Mirage. It's the semi-final matchup between Chaos and Yeah. And Yeah, well, they had a lot of fight in them, but it just wasn't enough to take down Chaos. 1916, we went all the way to overtime. The chips looked down at one point for Chaos. They were making some little errors, but the timeouts, the regathering of their forts certainly seemed to help. I think both teams deserves a lot of credit coming into this game, to be completely honest. Chaos going up 9-3, looking very hot in the beginning, in full control. Then there were small glimpses of them getting a little bit too complacent again, you know, feeling that, as Vanity said, coming into the game, they, they, you sit back with a feeling that the team, you know, of, of Chaos are thinking, okay, we already won, we're leading 9-3, it's going as it's supposed to, and, and you know, yeah, gaming, by no means a bad team, so they fought back, they got back into the game, and as you said, at one point, they were up 15-13. They could have closed out that first map, so, both teams deserve credit. Both teams could have won the game, but I think, individually speaking, Chaos just a little bit better in, in, in the small aspects in the game. I completely echo that sentiment. I cannot shake the feeling that Chaos are a team that works with the carrot or the stick scenario, right? <laughs> when it's working, mm. it's fine. They get a little bit too complacent, so they need a little bit of a and yeah. then they go back. They take, they make some mistakes. We've seen 5v4s being given away, 4v4 situations turning a little bit sour, but as we have the stats going on here, we see it was pretty much a team effort for the side of Chaos. Everyone between 16 and 28, it's just Marky living behind. And I do believe a name we need to mention is RCF. We've painted a picture of RCF being an absolute beast, mm. 
was one of the highest rated player coming on into this game, but he hasn't found that impact on Mirage. And I want to counter that with Junji as well, because we spoke about him, you know, if he's not playing well, Kaz are not looking too good. In this game, he wasn't playing bad, but he wasn't at the same level we've already seen, so they yep. won anyway despite Junji not playing well, and that's a sign of class as well. The death within that squad is still big. And one thing I'll say, right, when you're talking about Marky there, he did have the rough ride on the CT side. A lot of the time, B wasn't really being hit. He was B just anchor. trying to sit there to be anchor. It's not a fun spot to play. I don't enjoy it personally. I don't think he did when it was coming into that. But another player we've got to mention in positive light is Du Mao. 17 years old, poised to be an up-and-coming talent out of Brazil, and he is always on. I have not seen a bad game from him. No, for himself, the payoff is actually huge. We talked about him, we said he needed to show up, and he did. What more can you expect from him? Well, he had 29 kills, 80 ADR in a game where they lose in overtime. So I don't think we can be more demanding. We can no, expect definitely not expect so much more from Dumao. Again, if we think about structure and how the team is performing and the win conditions, he's done what he's been pretty much doing this entire tournament. Now we're going to overpass, and now we're going to the pick of chaos. Mm. This is a map that, honestly, guys, I'm not lying. The other team cannot play. Yeah, can't <laughs> play overpass. It's worse than watching a pug. The only player we have seen do anything is Dumao. He's the only one that still frags out when it comes to that map. Everyone else looks lost and disjointed. I'm going to go a little easy on them. They could play it to some extent. They got off to a good start yesterday. They went up 6-1. to one, But from that point and on, what you're right, it looked like, a, looked like an FPL game that gone wrong. You know, it looked like the teams uh, or the team again, you know, stop to communicate and, and yep. stop to play together. I think what we saw yesterday, we can't expect the same level from Yeah Gaming today. I think they'll do better today than it did yesterday. That can't be that bad every single time they play pass because if it is, this won't even be a game. So I'm going to say here, you know, that Yeah Gaming, sure, yesterday, that was very, very disappointing on pass. If they do better today, Chaos, they weren't looking too solid on pass either when we saw them the first time. So there could potentially still be a little bit of an upset in play here, but no doubt, Chaos are the favorites. Look, the numbers don't lie, right? 22% win rate, that is not enough for Yeah Gaming. But I just hope that Chaos will not be complacent. I don't think yeah. they should take it easy. They still have a map to win in order to qualify for the final. They do have a map to win, right? And they cannot take their foot off the gas. We're going to overpass next. It is Chaos's pick. Let's see if they can close it out and grab that grand final spot. Or if Yeah suddenly learn how to play overpass. 